climate change is a global challenge that requires global solidarity. It does not see borders. It does not see rich or poor. We need to mitigate it on a war footing. It's now or never. Adaji, it's become so hot this summer. Poor Chotu, he keeps panting with his tongue hanging out. That is the way dogs cool themselves, by hanging out their tongue with their mouths open. It's true, this seems to be the hottest summer I have ever experienced. Is it because of global warming? Why is the earth turning hotter, Dadaji? Poor Chotu, if it gets any hotter, we shall have to shave off all of his fur. Let me start at the very beginning. The earth has seen climate changes in the past, in its history of 4.5 billion years. Like the Ice Age? Master Ji had told us how the earth had suddenly turned very cold and there was ice all over. This caused many species like the woolly mammoth and the saber-toothed tiger to go extinct. These past climate changes were all due to natural causes and the earth managed to emerge out of this successfully and things stabilized. But the present climate change has man to blame. How? 10,000 years ago was one of the best periods the earth has faced. The climate was stable, seasons were predictable, weather was reliable. People knew exactly when summer or winter or the monsoons would arrive. Then began the Industrial Revolution. Factories sprung up everywhere to manufacture all kinds of goods. The factories used fossil fuels to run. What are fossil fuels? Fossil fuels such as coal, petroleum and natural gas are formed over a long period of time from the dead remains of plants and animals that may get buried inside the earth. All that burning of fossil fuels must have given off so much carbon dioxide into the air, isn't it, Tadaji? Right you are, and it still is. The average level of carbon in the air throughout our atmosphere has risen to more than 400 parts per million. Isn't that a huge amount? And that was not all. People found the need for transporting the goods they manufactured and themselves over large distances. The vehicles on roads, the ships in the oceans and the airplanes in the sky all needed to burn fossil fuel to work. What harm does carbon dioxide cause? Carbon dioxide is the major greenhouse gas. There are others too, such as methane, nitrous oxide, ozone and water vapour. Why are these gases called greenhouse gases? Do they come out of a greenhouse? We had better not ever think of painting our house green. <laughs> Kunti, your sense of humor really amuses me. But on a serious note, a greenhouse is a glass house in which certain plants are grown. The glass allows the sun's heat to pass through it, but does not let much of it get reflected back outside. So, even if the weather is cold, the trapped heat keeps the plants warm and comfortable. Now I understand. 
the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere behave like the glass and trap much of the sun's heat thus warming up the planet bilkul sahi since the past 150 years the earth's average temperature has risen by 2 degrees fahrenheit that is a huge amount it has brought about many drastic changes already our planet is getting hotter and hotter is that leading to what they call climate change but sometimes it suddenly rains and turns quite cool too to understand this i must first tell you the difference between weather and climate weather changes can occur from day to day sometimes it may become windy sometimes cool sometimes hot or humid but these changes do not last for long climate is the long term atmospheric conditions in a place like the climate of a desert is hot and dry while the climate in the arctic or antarctic is bitterly cold almost all year round shabash so though the weather may vary from day to day the climate all over the world is no longer static like it was before it is also changing but dada ji besides greenhouse gases are there other reasons too for climate change there are let me see if you can guess at least one more reason i got it what with trees being cut down everywhere it can get hotter isn't it dada ji wherever there are trees we feel cool That is why Chotu and I love to take a walk in Bhiga Bai Bag. There are so many trees. It's so shady and cool even in the afternoons. Bilkul sahi. Besides, trees absorb carbon dioxide and store the carbon in themselves as carbohydrates. They act like carbon sinks. So trees reduce the greenhouse effect to a great extent. Also, cattle farms too contribute to global warming and climate change. How? First of all, the cows need to graze on grass, so they diminish the ground vegetation in places. Some cattle herders take their animals into forests where they consume new saplings and prevent the growth of more trees. Besides, these ruminants emit large quantities of methane gas, which again is another greenhouse gas. How is climate change affecting people, plants and animals? There are many stories to answer your question. Did you hear that Chotu? Let's listen to Dadaji's stories. Let us imagine ourselves on the very high altitudes where lie the snow-capped peaks of the Himalayas. Brr. I can feel myself shivering with the cold. Whoosh. I can hear strong winds blowing all around. Chotu, we are on top of the Himalayan peaks. Aren't you feeling shivering? Do you see trees around? No, Dada ji. How can trees grow in such a harsh climate? Bilkul sahi. Trees cannot grow here as it is beyond the tree line. Only in summer, when some of the snow melts, you may see ground plants like moss and wild flowers these are called the alpine meadows now imagine the climate gets warmer by the day what changes do you expect the ice caps will melt and there will be gushing streams everywhere and new plants may begin to grow that is exactly what is happening 
and people from the valleys are shifting to these higher altitudes to settle there and grow crops but this happens to be the terrain of the snow leopard and its prey the bharal and ibex when the newly settled people see the snow leopard prowling around their hamlets which are actually in his territory they start pelting stones at him to drive him away who oh, is snow leopard don't you agree chotu now let's look into the plight of the polar bears who live in the arctic These enormous mammals use a particular strategy to hunt for their prey the seal they pick up their scent while walking on the thin sheet of ice that forms on the sea surface once they detect their prey they pounce on the ice and make a hole in it but dada ji due to global warming the ice sheet may not be forming isn't it bilkul sahi that is why the polar bears are starving how i wish the polar bears would adapt to hunting in a different manner the only way we could help those polar bears is by cutting down drastically the emission of greenhouse gases so that our planet does not get so warm Any more stories about animals getting affected by climate change, Dada ji? Climate change is affecting all living beings. It would be impossible to tell you all of their stories. But let me tell you about the turtles. Strange as it may sound, it is temperature that determines the sex of the newborn turtle. If the eggs have been exposed to low temperatures then they hatch into male turtles So with higher temperatures do the eggs all hatch into females Yes you are very quick Kunti if the turtle population is suddenly all female no males then how can they reproduce I yo That means they too are being threatened with extinction. Spot on. You hit the nail on the head. And talking about extinction in the tropical forests like in the western ghats, the humidity and excess heat give rise to fungal growths in certain frogs. This disease is leading to them going extinct too. What about birds, Dada ji? How are they affected by climate change? Oh yes, many birds from Siberia, Russia, and northern Europe, like the bar-headed geese, Amur falcons, demoiselle cranes, Siberian cranes. Greater flamingos migrate all the way to India to escape the bitter cold there each year. But now that even their homeland has begun getting warmer, they may not get the signal or the urge to migrate. And what about insects? I was coming to that. Trees have begun flowering erratically. not in spring or summer as they used to they are seen to be flowering in the winter months too but this is the time that most insects are hibernating so the flowers don't have their pollinators around this could cause a grave problem without pollination we can't get our fruits and vegetables What about all the marine creatures? Climate change is leading to a lot of changes in the oceans and to all those who live inside the marine world. First of all, the glaciers in the Arctic, Antarctic and Greenland have begun melting very rapidly. 
if all the glaciers were to melt, the oceans would rise by two hundred and thirty feet. Ayo, would that mean almost all of the earth would drown? In fact, so many islands have already begun submerging. Even in our Sundarbans mangrove forest in West Bengal and Bangladesh, people have had to evacuate as their homes on the islands are going under water. Moreover, much of the carbon dioxide that is continuously entering the atmosphere through our activities is dissolving in the oceans, making them acidic. Did you hear that, Chotu? Does the acidic water affect the sea creatures? It has already taken a toll on the coral reefs in just eleven years between two thousand eight and two thousand nineteen. Scientists have recorded that fourteen percent of the world's corals have got bleached. The corals cannot survive in warmer and acidic waters. The bleached corals dead? Bilkul. The zooxanthellae, the algae that live inside the polyps of the corals, die and get thrown out. But other life too gets affected in this coral graveyard. The sea anemone, the clownfish, and many other fish that normally make the corals their home can no longer survive in the dead coral reef. Did you hear that, Chotu? Besides causing glaciers to melt and affect all living beings on Earth, how else is climate change affecting our planet, Dadaji? Of late, many countries have been facing drought, and water sources have been drying up. Thus, farmers cannot grow crops, and food is becoming scarce. In other places, it is just the opposite. There are very heavy rainfalls, cyclones, flooding, and even landslides. In still others, there are severe forest fires, resulting in a reduction of biodiversity. Do forests burst into flames just because the climate is hot? In a forest, you must have noticed there are many dead leaves and fallen twigs. Which, along with the wood of the trees, act as ready fuel. It does not take much to start a fire there, especially when it is hot. It may be caused naturally by lightning striking this ready fuel, or by a human. A careless camper who had made a campfire may have left some twigs still glowing, or a cigarette butt which has not been put out. Ay yo! And all the carbon dioxide that the trees would have been absorbing would be returned back into the atmosphere. Dada ji, is there some way of preventing forest fires? First of all. There are strict laws to prohibit smoking or making campfires now in a forest. But in spite of that, there are people who flout the laws. In the Sanjay Gandhi National Park, which is in Mumbai's backyard, the forest department faces a huge problem every year. During Mahashivratri, why, Dada Ji? Because hordes of people make a pilgrimage through the forest to the Kanheri caves on that day. The forest department calls for volunteers on this day to ensure that no one breaks the rules. I would like to be a volunteer the next time, Dada Ji. You fill me with awe, my dear Kunti. 
I wish all the youngsters of your generation have the same kind of zeal and desire to take care of our planet. Action, action! We need to act now to improve things, Dada Ji. According to the unanimous decision of world leaders in the last COP26, a summit held to take action against climate change, all countries should work towards restricting the global rise in temperature by 2030 to 1.5 degrees centigrade. If they work towards this goal, then there is at least some hope for our planet. Global warming will continue, however, but it may not be so bad. The planet will be livable. But if the temperature continues to rise by 2 degrees centigrade, then we will have crossed the tipping point and reversing climate change will not be possible. Look, even Chotu is wagging his tail. He too realizes that we all need to take action now. Why can't people stop burning fossil fuels? Why can't they use other sources of energy like solar energy and wind energy? Well said, my dear Kunti. I wish everybody was as thoughtful and as sensible as you. People are switching to solar and wind energy, but rather reluctantly. The companies that mine for coal and others that drill for oil and natural gas do not want to lose their business. Why can't people use cars that work on batteries? instead of burning fossil fuel. In fact, automobile companies are talking of coming out with electric cars that work on batteries that can be recharged like a mobile phone. But they are working out to be atrociously expensive. But of course, Dadaji, best would be to walk on our own two feet or bicycle, isn't it? Oh yes, in the Netherlands, almost 90% of the people bicycle to work, young and old. It is the best way to keep physically fit too. People in big cities elsewhere have become lazy. They want to travel in the comfort of cars all the time, even for short distances. If not walk or bicycle, they could at least use public transport. In school, Master Ji was talking about the three R's. Reduce, reuse and recycle. Do you hear that, Chotu? Everybody should follow this. By reducing the amounts of goods we consume, by reusing items as far as possible instead of buying new ones and recycling, we are saving on those extra goods we would be purchasing, which again would require electricity for their manufacture or even burning fossil fuels. Oh, Dadaji, Dadi Ma deserves a reward for recycling. She has recently converted old clothes into a beautiful quilted blanket. And now she is also ripping off my old sweater and using the same wool to knit into a new sweater for me, as the winter will soon be approaching. Indeed, practicing the three hours should be a way of living for everybody. If all the 8 billion people on our planet were to follow the three hours, then our planet would be a much better place. Why don't you make some posters, Kunti, to spread the word about combating climate change? Good idea. And so, Kunti makes some posters and with Dadaji's help, puts them up in various strategic places all over town.
प्लीज लिव सिंपली ओनली बाय वॉट यू रियली नीड ओवर कंज्यूमरिज्म कैन हर्ट आर प्लैनेट ईट योर ओन हेल्दी होम ग्रोन फूड्स अवॉइड फास्ट फूड्स अ लॉट ऑफ रिसोर्सेज आर यूज अप टू प्रोड्यूस दम कैरी योर ओन शॉपिंग बैग्स रिफ्यूज टू एक्सेप्ट प्लास्टिक बैग्स फ्रॉम शॉपकीपर्स दे एंड अप इन आर ओशंस द सन अनफेलिंगली ब्रिंग्स नाइट एंड डे बट पीपल्स थॉटलेस एक्शंस आर लीडिंग थिंग्स अ स्ट्रे माइंडलेस टॉक्सिक एमिशन कार्स स्प्यूइंग पोल्यूशन trees being raised to the ground how can pure air ever abound how much can nature withstand our ever mounting demands cyclones tsunamis droughts what more people are wondering what else is in store we need our saviors the trees we need to keep land concrete free pollution of land rivers and seas should now be taboo if you please no more actions that would hurt our one and only planet earth only then can we restore the glory of earth forevermore